from Arlington, Texas, United States of America. Welcome to Christ's Glorious Rising Ministry. Welcome to our channel today. I hope you have been enjoying our videos. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for an opportunity to share what today. I pray, Lord, Father. The Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. As I want to set the captive free, and I, as I begin to minister now, let the power of the Spirit, the anointing of the Spirit, begin to flow through the screen, begin to flow through the world, through the airways. As people hear the word of God, let there be change in their life. Let the word of God touch them and make a change. Jesus, mighty name, I pray. Amen. It is the Lord. The topic of the Holy Spirit today is uh, the handwriting on the wall. Our topic today from the Holy Spirit is uh, the handwriting on the wall. What does it mean? If you check your Bible very well, handwriting on the wall means that uh, there's a message from God. See, many times God will send messages to people through prophets, He will send messages to people through many ways in the Old Testament. But when you do hear, God will move to another dimension and write it on the on the world for us to see. So it means that uh, God always won before he punishes. That's the meaning of the handwriting on the wall. God always won people before he strikes. It's only the devil that don't want anybody. He caught you on a ways. Towards the end of uh, last year, I had a dream which I shared with very few people that are very close to me. People who are ministers of the gospel that are very close to me, like my prayer partners. I saw myself in the in the dream walking towards a, a particular street. And when I was going, I saw a signboard. And the signboard was the signboard of a church. And when I was going, the, the, the Holy Spirit telling me to branch. And when I enter, it was a very big building, like a very magnificent theater hall. But unfortunately, when I enter, the place, the lights that were inside were like a like disco lights. The place was very dark. And I saw many erudite uh, scholars, big pastors, tight suits, but I don't know actually really any, but I saw them just sitting in front. So, and I saw something that was on the board. So they are trying to find an answer. Who know what who can interpret what is on the wall? There's an handwriting on the wall in the video, in the in the dream, sorry. So and when I enter, somebody shouted that ah, that man that just came in is a pastor. Everybody had tried to solve the video, nobody got the answer. So they called me, say, Are you a pastor? I say, Yeah. I, I went to stand on the back, they called me to come out. I say, Can you please try? So I, I don't want to go, but the least say, go. Say, by the time you get there, I will tell you the answer. So I got there. And suddenly, something just, and I, an hand took my hand, and as I put my hand, and I wrote T H R U T H, which is true, and the, and the, and the radio opened up. And then there was a shout everywhere, and uh, the, uh, there was a shout everywhere, and uh, eventually, the, the San Angel that told me, say, Go and preach the truth. Go and preach righteousness. This is what we are we, is missing in our church today. Praise the Lord. So, the purpose 
of the church today. One of the reasons why we have a trouble in our church is that the, 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 the church has completely gone off course in many places. People don't know why a church is set up. People don't know what gospel to preach. Some people don't even know what gospel to listen to. So as I go on in this video, we answer some of these uh, questions. Let us read Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Romans chapter 1, from verse 16 and 17. I want to read from the Amplified Classic uh, Translation. I want to see the target of the gospel, the focus of the gospel. What are we supposed to be preaching? What is the gospel? Let us read Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I read from the Amplified Classic Translation. So there I read. It says, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I read it right there. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, good news of Christ. The first thing you need to know about the gospel is that it's a good news. So anywhere you go to, any church you go to, Anywhere you go and hear the gospel, the gospel is good news. Either to sinner or no, everybody is a good news. Why is it a good news to everybody? It's a good news to uh, arm robber. It's a good news to fornicators. It's a good news to everybody. It is everywhere. Why? Because God is not holding anything against anybody. As you are hearing the gospel now, it's good news. I have to say you have been given a clean slate. That's the meaning of good news. So the gospel is to uplift you. No matter what you are facing, no matter what doctor have said, no matter what anybody has said, no matter who is uh, threatening you, once you hear the gospel, the gospel is the best that you can hear. The best because it's from God. Good news from God. That's the first thing about the gospel. I want to know. Again, let's move Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. See, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ. If you are in debt, it will take you out of debt. If you are sick, it gets you out of sickness. You are looking for a husband, it gets you a husband. Looking for what? It gives you a wife. Looking for house, it gives you a wife. Anything that you are looking for, there's nothing that you are looking for that the gospel cannot give you. The only thing that gospel cannot give you is what does not fall in line with the word of God. He said, For it is God's power. Working unto salvation. So it means that uh, the gospel, the purpose of the gospel eh, is to transform life, is to change life. See, working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes, as you say, for the gospel to work for you, you have to work, believe it. So the gospel. The people anywhere you go to and hear any gospel, like when you call gospel, the, 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 the purpose of the gospel is to turn people's life around, to change our conduct, to change our mindset, to the mindset of a God. So wherever you go and hear a gospel, and does not, when you hear the gospel, and does not tell you area to change, and I will, even when, as a pastor, whatever level you are, there will say the area of improvement. So the purpose of the gospel is to change is not to maintain the status quo. Anywhere you go to, anybody that's telling you that I'm preaching the gospel, and this is, and he is telling you that uh, it doesn't matter, you can live anyhow, it is not the gospel. That is not the gospel of God, it is the gospel of the uh, devil. Another point to me, everyone who believes with a personal trust and confident surrender and family lands to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, why do we need a personal trust and a confidence surrender? Because God gave us free will, all of us. So no God cannot even reach you without your permission. That's one of the power that we have as, as individual. So you have to submit yourself, you have to open the door for the gospel, for the gospel to work for you. It is not automatic. So people don't know. They say, no, if we, if we say we have anointing, let us go to hospital. 
Oh, good when you are going to open the people's bank. But when Jesus was on it, he did not act like that. There are some people, the Bible shows there are some people that Jesus can't know him. He's in the Bible. And as I go on, you will see. Verse 17. He said, For in the gospel, a righteousness which God has cried is revealed. God singing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith, that arouses to more faith, as is written, the man who through faith is just, and upright shall live, and shall live by faith. There's so much thing that are loaded in this, uh, in this uh, uh, passage. And that thing is said that, uh, for inside the gospel, is what is the meaning of righteousness, according to this place, is that uh, righteousness is the way God thinks. Righteousness is the most of God. That is to say, the plan of God is for you to come out of that trouble. The plan of God for you is to be healed. The plan of God for you is to enjoy your life. The plan of God is to be delivered from oppression, from the devil. You see that? So, people ask me, I don't know whether it's the plan of God for me to suffer. You have not read the Bible very well. When you read the Bible very well, the only thing you read the Bible is the righteousness of God. That's me. That is me to say, that is the plan of God. And that the only way God can help you is through the word. The word is the power. He said, the scripture is the power. So if you want to get out from any trouble, if you want to move from one level to another, what does the scripture say about that thing? Enter the thing, believe it, and the power for that thing will enter you and push you to the next level. That is the meaning of that play. So when you study the Bible, you will see that uh, righteousness, power, faith, grace, truth, justification, righteousness, everything, they are the same. That is what the gospel gave back to. That's what I want you to know about the gospel. As I go on, I will tell you why I'm saying, uh, explaining the gospel like this. I don't say. Because many people don't know the focus of the gospel. The gospel is to set you free. Not to put you in no trouble. Not to put you into no trouble. Not to compound your trouble. So any gospel that you hear, that they are telling you, that uh, they are telling you that your problem is increasing, it means you are not listening to the gospel. You are listening to something else. The gospel is to set you free. If you follow what the gospel say, you will come out because that is the highest power that we have in the universe. That's the first thing I want us to know about the gospel. Again, let us go back to see. Let us read. Uh, uh, let's see. Let us read Second uh, Corinthians chapter. 5, verse 17 to 21. Before we read that, please, let us read Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. I'll just paraphrase it because of my time. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. I read it from the Amplified Translation. Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more, was more stubborn subtle and crafty than any living creature of the field which the Lord God has made. And he Satan said to the woman, Can this be really be that God has said you should not eat from every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the tree of the garden, except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. For God knows that the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil, and blessing and uh, calamity. Now, what I just want to bring out from that place is that uh, we read Romans chapter 1, verse 10. He said, I'm not, Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the, uh, is the power of God. He said, said, from that uh, um, uh, gospel, is the righteousness of God he from faith to faith. The righteousness, the power of God, the word of God, the faith, all of them, they are the same thing. They are derivative of the scripture. So what he's saying now is that uh, from that uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, anytime you hear righteousness in the Bible, it means God's standard. God set a standard for mankind. 
God said is Tana for mankind. Now, in order for you to enjoy whatever God promised in the Bible, you have to operate by God's standard. So the devil now came here, came to he came through a uh, serpent to the woman. What is the purpose of the target of the devil? Is to bring man down to the low God standard. Because as long as you stay on God's standard, the devil cannot penetrate you. Because man, by operating on God's standard, you are operating above the devil. You are operating above sickness. You are operating above poverty. You are operating above causes, general causes, by staying on God's standard. But the moment you come down, the moment you are living your life outside the scripture, you are operating below standard of God. Therefore, anything can assess you and penetrate you. So that is what uh, the devil did. The devil came through a serpent to reconcile man to himself, to bring them to his level so that he can enter and penetrate them. So that was what the devil commanded. So God now came back again and did the same thing. That is why we want to go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. If you are there, I read. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, 5.17 says, it says, 2 Corinthians 5.17 I read. It says, therefore, if any person, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messianic. He is a new creation, a new, a new creature altogether. The old, previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. The old, the flesh, and the new has come. Let, let, us, let, let me first of all explain that one. Now, God created Adam, put him in the garden. He was operating on God's standard, Adam and Eve. Now, Adam was the first person that was born again on the other side. He moved from life to death. How? Because he listened to the devil and come to another standard. So Adam was recreated. Adam and Eve, they were recreated when they listened to the serpent. They come under a new law and they become born again to the other side. They were born again from life to death. So they, they, they now took up the nature of the devil. So God now said that if any man is in Christ now, what God is trying to do is okay, hear the gospel and come back to life. Come up back to God's uh, standard. That's the meaning of righteousness. Come and operate on God's standard. That is the best standard. That's the meaning of righteousness. Righteousness means operating on the highest standard where you cannot be penetrated penetrable without your cooperation. So you know say all things are the new. The gospel bring a new package. And once you accept that package there, you are also recreated back to where Adam was before the devil came. Verse 18. He said, but all things are from God who through Jesus Christ we reconcile us into himself, just like the devil came to reconcile Adam and Eve to himself. God now came back through Christ. The devil used serpent to talk to them. God used Christ to come and reconcile us. Who through Jesus Christ reconcile us to himself? Receive us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that by word and deed we might be able to bring others into harmony with him by our conduct, by our lifestyle. By what we preach, by telling them the word of God, then you can bring them back to God. So anybody that comes to you and preach the gospel to you, and what he's saying does not agree with what the scriptures say, is bringing you to another realm that is not God's realm. It's not taking you back to the righteousness of God. It's taking you back to maybe their church program, their church doctrine, but doesn't take you to the standard of God, where you become operating at a level where you cannot be penetrated by the demons. The only power. That the devil bowed to is the power of God. Verse 19. He said, It was God personally present in Christ 
reconciling and returning the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against them their trespasses, but counseling them and committing towards the message of a reconciliation of the restoration to favor. So that is the ghost. The first thing you need to know about the gospel is the gospel of reconciliation back to the every places, back to the garden of Eden, back to righteousness. We now operating back on gold standard. That's the of righteousness. That the of gospel. So the gospel is about righteousness. The gospel is about the truth. I told you that the truth, the grace, righteousness, power, faith, everything, they are the same. They are all just derivative of each other. When you talk about them, they are the same. Because all of them came from the gospel. They came from the power. They came from the word of God. So righteousness in the Bible is restoring us back to God's standard where Adam was operating before the fall. So any gospel that we are hearing, that does see restore, that does see take you back, is not a gospel. As I go, you understand why I'm saying this one, I'm, I'm, I'm saying now. Just put that at the back of your, of your mind. Let us go uh, further. So that, that was why I tried to reconcile these uh, uh, two pieces. So again, our topic that we are sharing is a uh, handwriting on the wall. The God showed me that I should go and preach this message to believers because many people don't even know what is the gospel, what is the package, what is God saying, what is the mind of God about the gospel, what is this, what are you supposed to be preaching to people? That's why I show you this uh, man fell in the garden of Eden, they went from God, they became the child of the devil. Now God came with the gospel of Christ. He paid the Bible saying, all have seen and the first shot of the word of God. That is to say, they come below God's standard. They are operating below the level that God put them at the acceptable standard of God. That God now said Christ to die. Because the Bible says, the, 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 the wages of sin is dead. Somebody has to die. A righteous man sin, and a righteous man came to die to take us back to the standard. That is the first thing you need to know about the gospel. I was invited, this is why I brought this service that I was invited also to a church by a, a friend one time, Lisa. So, and I told her that, see, I, the, I, the, I, there are churches that I don't attend, not as a matter of pride, because of what people preach. We have different messages. This church is preaching this way, different topic for this one, this one, they teach the same, different things there. So, I have people, I listen, I have to listen to the pastor before I go to that church. So that one person, my spirit, or they don't kill me, like a pastor Ben used to say. It is very important what you are listening to. It is very important where you go and uh, listen to messages. So when I got to the church, I was introduced, and the pastor asked about my this and he went in the prayer of the church, me to say something that doesn't have been with those people. And this church has uh, so many people. I, I cannot count. More than over four or five hundred people in attendance. And I begin to say something. I wonder what this, where did this person get his uh, doctor from? You see, let us read the, uh, uh, let us see. But Pastor Benny said something one time. I was, I was listening to him. He's one of my mentors. He said, I'm very careful about who I listen to. And this morning, while I was studying, this book was explained to me why we should be careful of who we listen to. Because Christianity, one of the reasons why we don't enjoy the Christianity is that uh, to enjoy our Christianity, there is something about our mindset. As long as our mindset does not agree with the mindset of Scripture, we will not enjoy the Christianity because the, the, our mind is like the cutting. Our mind is like the, uh, 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 is like the uh, immigration border that will allow the, the thing that God said to come to, to, to come to pass in our life, that will, that will push it from the spiritual realm to the physical. So, our mindset is very very important. And how do we protect our mindset by the people that we listen? Anybody that is telling me something that I cannot find in the Bible, I don't listen to them. I don't give them opportunity because if your mind is not gated, if your mind is not ironed up, it is easy to penetrate your mind. But and once your mind start programming, thinking and acting, expect to get results in your body. Expect to get results in your mind. That is the power of mind. I'm going to share some video on the power of our mind. One of these days. 
Let us read Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verses 23 to 25. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verses uh, start from verse 23. I'm reading from the Amplified Translation. So you can see how Mark chapter 4, Mark 4, 23. Mark chapter 4, verse 23. It says, He says, If any man our Lord, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ was talking here. Mark chapter 4, verse 23, from the Amplified Classic. If any man has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him perceive and comprehend. Because if you, if you read this way from a, a verse 1, Mark chapter 4 was talking about the parable of the sower. The problem in the parable, I have studied this place over and over many years, but one day recently I was telling and God has shown me the secret, the key in that parable. I've been thinking, how can uh, uh, the soul has sold the word of God and the devil come and eat it? And the bird come and take it? And the devil come and snatch it? But the focus of that parable, I have prepared a message on it already, is that uh, the reason why the devil was able to take the word was that uh, the devil can only take the word that you don't understand. The devil can only take scripture that you don't understand. So, in the parable of Soa, in the word of God, understanding is very, very important. This Bible fans that are given, do you understand it? Because the devil knows that uh, go to church, study the Bible, read the Bible. But as long as you don't understand it, you are just wasting your time. It is the understanding of the scripture that produces power. To get the meaning. That's the meaning of the word when they say when we hear the word the the the, the 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 letter kill it, but the spirit give life. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that writes the scripture. So if you don't know the spirit, if, you don't, if the spirit does not explain to you what it says there, you can take the scripture and apply it wrongly and, and kill yourself all the time. That's that's the meaning of the word kill it. The letter kill it. So first twenty will be ready with Mark chapter twenty. You see, if any man has here to hear, let me be listening and let him perceive and comprehend. Understand what you read, otherwise, the devil will take it from you. Verse 24 And he said to them, Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give, and the verse 24 the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that come back to you, and more beside will be given to you who hear. So he said, be careful of what you are hearing. That's the first thing. Be careful of the source. Be careful of who is preaching. This person that is preaching, did you understand what they say? Because they will transfer nonsense to you, and you begin to process nonsense, and the nonsense will prevent you from hearing the correct message of God. That's one thing that that place is telling us. Be careful where you are the source of what you are hearing. Look at the person that is preaching. Look at their lifestyle. Does the lifestyle of the person agree with the scripture? Be careful. Of what you are used to. So be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought. That is to say, hearing the word of God is known. One of the things that bring power, one of the things that bring understanding is to meditate on what you say. That is what produces, you know, when you meditate on the scripture, the understanding comes from meditating over and over and over and over and over. Every day I get new insight on places that I know because I stay a long time studying and uh, meditating. So, he said the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge. So, the same scripture can give somebody 80% measure of knowledge, can give somebody 500%, when somebody can get only 1%, and when somebody don't get everything here. Because if you look at the parable of so if you go backward, you will see, he said some people produce 60, 70, 30, and 100%, depending on the time, depending on the meditation. They give to you at the time they need to study to grab the understanding from the scripture. They come back to you, and more beside will be given to you to hear. You see, for to him who asks will not be given, and from him who asks nothing 
Even what he has will be taken away by force, by the devil. Because why can the devil snatch the word of God for people? He only snatch the word of God that you don't understand. And whatever you have, let's say you have 10 percent, it will become zero. So how much power you carry, how much money you carry, the power you carry, will be depending on how much time you give to the truth, the gospel that you are hearing. That's why the Bible says that uh, all sides of the four verses say, my people are destroyed because of the lack of uh, knowledge. So knowledge comes from what you hear, and how, how does what you hear transfer to knowledge? You meditate on them, and what? Take your time, study very well, and understand. If you don't know, ask questions for people that know, so that you don't go about uh, carrying something that is uh, wrong, because it will produce wrong results in your body. That is one thing I want to see from that day about the ghost play. What our target is to uh, actually know what we are actually going through, what, what we are facing. That is the basis of a uh, uh, the scripture. Let us read the. Uh, let us read the. Uh, uh, we have read uh, seven. Five, I want to compare seven. Five, 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 seven, five, seventeen. We have read this. Let us read uh, Matthew chapter nine. First of all, let's let's go to back to that second Corinthians chapter five or seventeen. Let me just show you something. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Five seventeen. If you are there, I read. Second Corinthians. These are the these are the basics. These are the foundation of the gospel. But once this foundation is not there, you will commit error. You note this point very well. These are the things that I studied when I started many years ago. He said, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ. The Messiah. He is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the flesh and you has come. Verse 18. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us unto himself, brought us into harmony with himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that by word and deed we might aim. To bring order into harmony with uh, him. So what is telling us that uh, everything about the devil is not the, the devil does not have anything inside somebody that is born in it. Look that one. You see, if any man is in Christ, he is a brand new person. This is one of the things that people don't understand. I, oh, there was a time I was listening to one pastor one time. Any pastor that preached this thing and does not preach it like this, once I hear you say, say is I know what the Bible says, that I just change the channel instantly. Because once the foundation of this Bible verse is wrong, we will commit blunders in the scripture. This is the problem of many. I want to listen to this area very well. This is the problem of many people. I have a, I have a, a, a series of years in this thing on the new life in Christ. I just want to share this thing with us to correct some of the errors that people have been carrying. If any man is in Christ, the Bible says, this, this is God's this is God's statement. You don't, it doesn't need any other interpretation. If you want to understand it, read it from verse 1. 7 Corinthians 5 from verse 1 to 8. Read it from what you get believe. It's talking about a new life that's just started. All things are passed away. He doesn't say when you pray, he says it's a new creation. That's God's statement. God created Adam in the first uh, in the in the Genesis. And the devil came and recreated Adam. Now God is not saying that this is. God now come and recreate human beings again. This is another creation. This is another record. In another beginning of a new person. And what is the being of born again? Is a new spirit came into our body. So as far as God is concerned, the old person is, is gone. There's no record as far as God is concerned. No traces for that person. And if you don't understand this thing, you have problem with all these people that are talking about a generational cause. They're talking about uh, altars. They're talking about uh, your background. They're talking about a uh, foundation. This is the foundation of of new life of Christianity. Let, let me show you another scripture to explain this for people who have not uh, understand it. Let's see Matthew chapter nine, verse uh, sixteen and seventeen, and say to this thing once and for all. Matthew chapter nine, verse uh, six. Uh, Matthew five. Sorry, Matthew 9, 16 and 17. Matthew 9. Matthew 
9, 16, and 17. This is our Lord Jesus Christ talking. He said, He said, And no one good a piece of coal that has not been shown on an only let me read from the King James so that you can get this very well. Lots of people, uh, let me read from the King James, uh, King James translation. 9, Matthew 9, 16 and 17. Because of that word I will use there. Some people will not understand this. 16 and 17. He said, No man put a piece of new cloth into an old garment. For that which is put into, fill it up, take it from the garment, and the rent is made worse. He said, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. As the bottle break, and the wine took run it out, and the bottle perished. But they put new wine into a new bottle, and both are preserved. What is this telling us that uh, we do when you are when you become a Christian, when you are born again, there is nothing like a mixture of the old and the new. As far as God is concerned, the old has gone with the devil. The old has is no existing again. Christ has come and has paid the price for the old. Whatever what has happened. God is somebody that does not, when God wants to treat a problem, when God wants to treat you, God does not cut, when, when there is a tree that has a problem, God doesn't cut it from the, from the, from the, from the, uh, middle. God always deals with problems from the root. The problem of mankind started from the Adam. The God of the day. Now God will go and bring another Adam to cancel it from the root. So if anybody is telling you about the, uh, the, the your father's house, your father's company, uh, the Disney, as far as God is concerned, you cease to be in that family. You are now born into the family of God. Like Jesus Christ was born, they are called the, the uh, child of Holy Spirit. So in Christianity, we don't mix the old with the new. Anybody that is preaching to you, that is telling you about the old, as far as God is concerned, is telling you lie. It's not in the gospel. The old and the new, they don't mix together. Either in the wine, he said, nobody put a new wine into an old bottle. This is one of the areas that people need to know. Because when you put a new coat to match the old one, the new clothes will tear the old one as, as scatter because the old has gone. It doesn't have power again. It's weak. So Christianity is a new life. It's about a new life. So any message that you're hearing that is still linking you back to the past, telling you about the past, after you're born again, is not the gospel. The gospel started from new life. And the Bible says, all things have passed away. As far as God is concerned, Everybody preaching it, we don't know where they get their uh, uh, this thing. As far as God is concerned, the old is what? It's, it's, there's no record. Because the Bible says, we, are, we, de- we have been buried with Christ. See? So the person that used to exist before, the old person was dead. If you go and read Romans chapter 6, he's dead buried. Because when you plant a seed there, eh, it is not the one that you plant that, that, that come on. The, that one die. Before the new one comes up, that is the meaning of a born again. I will show you more scripture now to emphasize this thing so that in case you are hearing uh, something, you have been hearing something that is not the gospel before. John chapter 3, verse 3 to 6. John chapter 3, verse 3 to 6. I read from the Amplified class here. John. Chapter 3, verse 3 to 6. The Bible says, from, let me start from verse 1. There was a man, let me read from the Amplified Classic, say, Amplified Classic Translation. Say, there was a man, there was a certain man, according to the Pharisees' name. So, there was a certain man among the Pharisees, named Nicodemus, the ruler, the leader. An authority among the Jew. See, he was a very mutant person. The Pharisees, doctors of law, the apostles of that time, who came to Jesus at night and started to say, and, and said to him, Rabbi, we know and are certain that you, are, that you have come from God. 
I said, teacher, for me, one can do this science, this wonder works, this miracles, and produce the proof that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a person is born again, now he's telling us he will not born again, born in him from above, he cannot ever see, know, be, be acquainted with and experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter his mother's womb again and be born? Jesus answered, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a man is born of water, even in the spirit, he can never enter into the kingdom of God. The, my part of emphasis in Ephesus he said, What is born from the flesh is flesh, of the physical is physical. And what is born of the spirit is a uh, of the spirit. That is the meaning of born again. See, first time we say, Mother, not do not be surprised. As Tony, at what I'm telling you, you was born in, born in you from above. The meaning of born again is that uh, the, our first birth, we are born by a woman. We are born to a woman. If you read the Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, Jesus Christ say, Among those that are born of women. There's no one uh, greater than John the Baptist. But the least person in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Let, let, let's read it, please. Matthew, uh, uh, yeah, Matthew 11, 11. For those who have not seen it before. Matthew 11, 11. I read, Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not been anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Because at that time, it was not possible to be born again. To be born again, is, it means to believe in the death and resurrection of Christ. And that time, Christ has not died. So they're still operating under the old covenant here. You get the point? So, to be born again means you are not born by, you are born by the Spirit. By the spirit. So as I go and I'll show you scriptures to, to to, to explain this uh, better. Let's go back to, let's go to another, let me choose another uh, scripture. Let, let's use the cross to explain the, the, the difference between the old and the new. Now, when you look at the picture of the cross of Christ, you see that the cross was like this. Now, then, like this. That's why we have a cross. One of the sort that God gave to me is I put cross on my or my logo. The cross. What what is the meaning of the cross? You see that uh, the, the the first one, the horizontal one, from heaven to the earth. When the man see in the Garden of Eden, the account of heaven eh, and, and and earth scattered. Heaven is saying something else. Heaven says something else to Adam. Then somebody from the earth come and tell him something else. So while God is saying something else, Adam and Eve are saying another thing. So the account of God and man scatter. So Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, to reconcile the past and the future. So the, 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 the point of the cross intercession is, is, is where the price was paid. So everything that is happening before the cross, the cross has put an end to anything that happened before the cross. So the gospel of Christ starts from after the cross. The gospel of salvation starts from after the cross. You understand? So any, any gospel that you are hearing, eh, the gospel is the power of God. It's the power of God. It, it has anything that, does, that is happening, any causes, any general causes, every other thing that Christ came, to redeem us from all those things. So the gospel starts from after the cross. So any scripture that you are using, whether in the Old Testament, any other scripture that you see, some of them they prophesy about the Christ. They say something about the Christ. But after the cross, after the church has been born, you need to check that scripture from Genesis to anywhere. If they are not consistent with the provision of uh, the gospel after from act of us to trash the, the, the whatever that is it because it was not possible 
for the real New Testament to be in effect until the death of Christ. That, that give us so the Old Testament is the old will of God. I wish done this one in one of my videos. The Old Testament means we. So the Old Testament, the, 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 let me say the Old Covenant, because the difference between the Old Testament and the Old Covenant. Isaiah, all those ones, they are, they, are, they are part of the Old Testament, but there is a covenant that God used, the covenant of blood, to redeem mankind. But the, the, once Christ came, he paid the price once and for all, and set to all uh, the Old Covenant, so that the New Covenant can start. That's another topic on a, another, another time. So any any message that you're hearing that does not correspond there, because all these people that say uh, deliverance, uh, uh, generational causes, so uh, family order, apostle Paul, you don't preach it. This is Christ not preach about the generational cause. He does not preach about deliverance. All the deliverance about the gospel is to give your life to Christ. Once you give your life to Christ, the, the person that the devil arrested is dead. No record, they cannot find again. They say, they, they say, they say as far as God is concerned, the person that the devil has power over is dead. Just not exist again. So the cross is the beginning of the gospel. I want to do that point. I'm going to share that one on the another topic called the gospel. What is the gospel? So somebody, when I go to the church, the pastor said, I say, you know. Uh, I see you are very uh, this uh, great man of God. I see, see, see but there's something in the, from your feelings that I saw. See, there's something from the village from, from at the back of a, a one tree away, but from your father, from your father's side of this. Thing. And immediately after service, I called the pastor. He said, Never in your life stood him right to his face, not at the back. So, because you know, we, the, the gospel we are preaching, we are just collecting data from people who don't understand the gospel. Never in your life again, tell me that. Because what you have said shows that you don't understand the gospel. Because now that we are born again, you are born into another family. Even though you may look like people from your family, as far as God is concerned, you cease to be in that family. I will show you one or two uh, scriptures for those who are, not, are, are, are still uh, in doubt prior in uh, this uh, video. Let us look at um, let us look at uh, um, First Peter chapter two, verse is uh, nine and ten. No, no, let, let's go to let's go to this place first. Let's go to um, um let us go to. Let's go to um, Hebrew. Let's go to um, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 22. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 22. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 22. Give you like two uh, uh, scriptures, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 22. This is one of the things that people hear and they believe. They will tell you that you are under a curse now. After you have given your life to Christ, there's a tree in your father's side, in your father's house. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. And like I said before, the gospel is a good news. The gospel is something that sets people free. It's something, it doesn't, it's not something that puts people in trouble. Any church that you go to, and at the end of the service, you go there with 2%, and the pastor has not given you 80%, it's not the church, it's not a church. It will be a shrine. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. It says, But whether you have come to Mount Zion, even to the city of the living God, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. But whether you have come to Mount Zion, even to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless multitude of angels in the first garden, and to the church assembly of the first of the firstborn, who are to register as citizens in heaven. 
unto the God, unto God, just unto the God who is judge of all, unto the spirit of his righteous, the redeemed in heaven, who are being made perfect, unto Jesus the mediator, go between agent of a new covenant, unto the sprinkled blood, we speak of mercy, a better and nobler and more gracious mercy than the blood of today, which cry out of a vengeance. So what it means is telling us that uh, now that you are born again, you are now a citizen of heaven. You have been born into Zion. I will show you two more scriptures before I close. You are now a citizen of heaven. You see, it doesn't say you are coming. Say you are, you are come. You have arrived into Zion. What is Zion? Zion is the city of God. Zion is the heavenly Jerusalem. So when you are born again, eh? For example, let us say I was born in a village called uh, maybe. Uh, um, I was born in a village called uh, um, uh, uh, let me use one village in uh, 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 maybe in Africa I was, I was born in a village called uh, uh, Ibaraoke now there may be a tree in Ibaraoke there may be a tree in our district that is causing trouble for people here but once you become born again you are born into Zion let me show you two more scriptures to see. So it says, And to the church assembly of the firstborn, you are registered, you are now a citizen. You have been born into Zion. You have a birth certificate from Zion now, when you are born again. So all those birth certificates we have on the uh, ATA, the all those uh, former birth certificates, you are now born again into Zion. That is the only way where the devil cannot penetrate you. As long as you don't know about this citizenship, the devil can trace you, the, 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 the person that they can trace to their former destiny, as far as the, the word of God is concerned, is there. Let, let me show you two scriptures that, that explain it as I close now. Let, let, let's read the, let's read the Galatians, Galatians chapter, Galatians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, that we read the one more place, Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. You see, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. Please pay attention to this place. I'm reading from the Amplified. It's about to close now. Say, Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. It says, For it is written that Abraham has two sons, one by the bondmaid and one by the free woman. But, but whereas the child of the slave woman was born according to the flesh, you see now, and had ordinary birth, if you, if you study this uh, story very well, uh, Isaac was born by the promise of God, while uh, Ishmael was born according to the flesh, idea from the wife, which caused problem that is causing problem for us today, up to now, that Ishmael. So Ishmael was born according to the flesh, while Isaac was born according to the promise. So it's, it's trying to so pass a transfer. Now all this is an allegory. These two women represent two covenants. One covenant originated from Monzana, where the law was given, and their children destined for slavery. This is Aga. Now Aga is stand for Monzana in Arabia, and she corresponds to I belong in the same category with the present Jerusalem, for she is the bonded together with her children. That is what we started ourselves. That is what Abraham, uh, Abraham started when he did not come with for God's time. But Jerusalem, I want to look at verse 26. He said, But the Jerusalem above, the Messianic kingdom of God, is free, and she is our mother. Now, Jerusalem from above is our mother. For it is written. So when you are born again, you are born from a Jerusalem. For it is written in the scripture, Rejoice, O barren woman. Who has not given back to children? Break forth into joyful child. You who are not feeling bad pain. For the desolate woman has many more children than she who has a husband. But we, brethren, are children not from the physical descent, as Ishmael, but like Isaac, born in virtue of a promise. Yet, just at the third time, the child of the ordinary birth, born according to the flesh, Despised and persuaded him who was born remarkably according to the promise and the working of the Holy Spirit, as is now also. 
first party. He said, but what does the scripture say? Cast out and send away the slave woman and her son. For never shall the son of the slave woman be here and share in the entrance with the sons of the woman. So brethren, we who are born again are not children of slave woman, the natural, but the free, the supernatural. So if you want to trace your origin, you want to trace your lineage, trace your knowledge to God, trace your way to Christ, not to the first Adam. As far as God is concerned, God is not talking about our uh, daddy in the village, whatever. All of us come from your father, Adam. And Christ came to scatter that program. Whenever God wants to solve the problem, he go to the root. Do you know what I say? Who shall us have said to this mother? Be removed. That is it. Who shall us have said to the tree? Be uprooted from the root. That is our God. Our God. God does not cause it. But what some of the pastors are doing, they are causing the problem of, 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 of this thing. Why the Bible say, if any man is in Christ, he said, that is the starting point. If, we, if that is not the starting point, we are in trouble. That's why the Bible says, that. if the foundation will destroy, what can the righteous do? There's nothing that links you with the past. No matter what you have done in the past, as far as God is concerned, the Bible says God does not count it again. It is concerning the world, not counting them against them. Because Christ has paid for them again. So you say, say Pastor, hey, what about the altar? Hey, what this altar? And ask them, what is that talk about altar? In our family. Between altar and the devil, who is more powerful? Who created altar? Who started altar? It's not the devil. And the victory that Christ gave to her is not over altar. It's over, over, over the devil, the boss. That is what I want to do. Let me read this place as I close now. Psalm 87. So if any pastor is telling you about the uh, generational causes, uh, there's a tree. I told that pastor, say, never in your life. I won't go to service. I don't want to disgrace you publicly here. So these are the people that are causing problems for the uh, members of that congregation. So I'm going to preach them. To preach the truth today. Let, let me show you what the Bible says. So anytime you want to hear the Paul, if you are born again, see what the Bible says. Let me read this place as I close. Uh, uh, Psalm 87. Psalm 87 from verse 1. Psalm 87. I read. Psalm 87. Mm -hmm. I, I, I first of all, from King James, then I will change it to Amplify, to see. I will continue on that, on that video. Psalm 87, verse 1. He said, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loved the gate of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. So, if anybody is telling you about the foundation, about the tree, you know, this thing, go, go and check what the Bible says about Zion. That's where you come from. A citizen of Zion. There's no tree, any evil tree in my own in my own Zion, uh, background. Any evil tree that you see has died with the former person before I became born again. And so his foundation, our foundation, that those are born again. Our foundation is from the only city. That is where our source of, of life comes from. We are the devil cannot get to. The love, the love never the gate of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Fasting. He said, Glorious thing, I'm speaking of thee, O city of God. He said, Let me read, let me check that place to amplify from that place. Fasting. He says, Glorious thing, I'm speaking of you, O city of God. Sela, pause and come and realize what that means. He said, Glorious thing, I'm speaking of you. So, whenever you come to the church, after you are giving your life to Christ, the only thing that you are supposed to hear is what? Glorious things. Because when you are hearing terrible things, eh, terrible things is, is, is looking for you, it's going to happen. Because the Bible says, when you hear word, you may get on me. And the Bible says, as a man thinks, he's out, so he's seen. So our message as pastor to people that are born again is to tell them the new thing. What the gospel say? What, why did Christ come to die if the evil spirit will still kill you? Why did Christ come to do? What did he come to do? So to deliver us. So, let, let, let me, let me, let me, let me quickly raise this place. The other thing I spoke of you, city of God. He said, I will make mention of Rahab, the poetic name, for Egypt and Babylon, and among those who are, who are the only God, the, um, who know the city of God. Behold, Philistia, and with Ethiopia, Kosh, saying, this man was born there. Yes, of Zion, Jabisai, this man and that 
man was born in her. For the most I will establish her. The Lord shall come when he register the people that this man was born there, seller, boss, and family think of that. The singer, as well as the player or instrument, shall say, All my springs, my source of life and joy, and you. City of God, that is our source. So if anybody is telling you anything in the church, the Bible say, Do all your things and spoken. So what I expect now is don't see you get worse when you are working with God. There is no scripture that suggests that when you work with God, things will get worse. It is not in the scripture. The Bible says, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, the path of the just. It's like the light. You are shining better and brighter. He said, he that has begun a good thing in your life, we continue to the perfection. It doesn't get worse with God. That's one thing I want to know. Let me read one more place. I want 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2, 9. Just that place more. I'll close now. 1 Peter 2, 9. To see. If anybody has been telling you, somebody is bewitching you. 1 Peter 2, 9. Says, and I close. First Peter, First Peter 2 9. Let's listen. This is God's statement. This is an interpretation directly from God. He said, But you are chosen this. Those are born again. A dedicated mission. God's own portion special people that will set for the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfection of him who has called you out of darkness into marvelous light. That is the gospel. So he called us from darkness into marvelous light. As he called to you, the light gets brighter. So as far as God is concerned, you are not in any darkness. So that pastor that was telling me that he uh, uh, sees something, I say, never in your life. Like, I stopped telling people what is not the scripture. So they come, they want to see themselves as a uh, a superstar. You see, I have uh, this thing. They will see future. They will begin to tell you age and something that does not. The gospel is about set people free, not put them in bondage. So he said, no, you can't. I'm not. I'm not. I know what the Bible says. So do you see why God has said? Uh, some somebody what I've just said in this message is that uh, God told us that uh, we need to go and show people the gospel. The gospel started from uh, any time you have the gospel is good news. It's power of God. The gospel talk about righteousness. Righteousness is God's standard that is set. If you want to enjoy your life, you have to operate on that standard. That is the highest standard. That is the standard that you cannot penetrate. Any other thing that they tell you is bringing you into trouble. The devil came to Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden and introduced a lower standard because God is the most high. And when they listen to that standard, they enter into trouble. And that's what brought all mankind into trouble. And God now sent Christ to come and Take us back to God's standard. And in the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, is a new creature. Everything started new. All things are passed away. Look at the tenses. It's not passing. Past tense, passed away. And all things, I say, behold, behold me, see that thing has changed. Then everybody tell you the past. God is saying, behold me, look at the future. The front, don't look at the back. He say, Remember the former thing again. I've, I've got a new thing. That is the meaning of born again. Every story of the past, every story of the future is not there. When anybody wants to tell you something about the every story, you say, glorious thing that Christ has done for all. That is what I want to hear. Not what is the past. Not what is in our feelings. And I said also that uh, the Bible says, you don't mix the old and the new. Nobody put a, 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 a old quote with the say if it's good, God doesn't mix old and new together. That's what they do. You come with some, some scripture and some nonsense to, to cause you trouble. The Bible also, also shows us uh, that uh, Jerusalem for her is our mother. Give back to us. Give back to us. And it shows us, uh, it, it shows us that uh, those that are born again, the physical, those that are, uh, they, there's a difference between somebody, uh, the, the physical, those are physical, who that is a physical is physical, those are spiritual and spiritual. They, are, they don't mix together. And the Bible says that uh, be careful of what you hear. Understanding is very important. Because whenever you hear and you don't understand, then you take it away. The only thing that they cannot take when you understand is they cannot you will leave you alone. Once you know that you understand what you are saying. So I hope this video has been uh, uh, be able to bless you. First uh, Peter chapter 2, verse uh, 9 says that uh, he said that. Uh, God, who has delivered from the, uh, from the darkness and has brought us into marvelous life, it doesn't get me a bad God. God is always going forward. 
when they get to the Red Sea, they say, where are we to go say? You tell them to go forward. God doesn't go back. Because it's the Almighty God. There is nothing that can limit God. So everybody is telling me about the tree, altar, whatever. There is no altar. The only altar that we have is the altar of Christ. Our body is the temple of God. Any altar, the devil is not uh, the who uh, created altar. It's not from devil. The deliverance that Christ brings to us is, is from the above, the bones of the altars. Don't let anybody tell you, don't say, I don't let me hope you into what is not correct. I hope this message address you. My name is Pastor Corridation from Alice. This is just the beginning. This one is a long series. Please like, subscribe. And I pray as you listen, the Holy Spirit will explain it to you more than what I say. The Holy Spirit has anointed you to preach this thing. And I know it did not come ordinary, it goes with the anointing. My name is Pastor Corridation from Alice, Texas, United States of America. God bless you.